For some reason, it just seems they don't make sports captains like they used to. Those who set the standards for others, those who take full responsibility for the team, and those who are fearless. The sports captain no longer represents what it used to represent. Fans feel something isn't quite right. Why is this? Why are sports captains getting worse? Let's find out. First, what actually makes a good captain? In his book The Captain Class, Sam Walker states there are seven key traits and behaviours that separate the greatest captains ever in sporting history. And each of these things are surprisingly rare when you dig deeper into how they are shown both in competition and in the dressing room. So let's look at extreme doggedness and focus in competition. This is the ability to show a level of commitment that doesn't waver whatsoever. Irrespective of the score, the person who shows this is someone who puts in their absolute best for every waking moment. We see this in someone like Carlos Puyol, the captain of Barcelona throughout the mid-2000s and 2010s. In a match in 2014 where Barca had just gone 5-0 up, Dani Alves and Thiago celebrated with a dance that was promptly stopped by an angry Puyol, shoving them back to the centre spot. It seems excessive given the game was already won, but that's what extreme focus looks like. There's no time for stupid dances. You're on the pitch to do a job and keep your concentration 100% until the final whistle. And when it comes to something like aggressive play, what we mean is intentionally testing the rules to their limits. Some call this unsporting, but the greatest captains ever put winning above everything else. The very best captains use aggression in a way that is strategic, to intimidate the opposition and to give their own teammates a boost. And the biggest contrast to highlight this is the current situation at Manchester United. Harry Maguire has faced an endless cycle of criticism, not just for his footballing ability, but also his ability to lead. And it doesn't help his case when he's compared with Roy Keane, United's captain of the late 1990s and the mid 2000s. Keane is perhaps the most aggressive captain English football has ever seen. And although there were times he let his aggression tip over into blind rage, in most instances, how he behaved on the pitch was strategic. Someone like Maguire should intimidate. Just look at his face and the fact he's six foot four. But deep down, he's not aggressive enough. Those captains who engage in aggressive play do not care what others think of them. And Maguire clearly does, in putting his fingers into his ears, when scoring for England against Albania after months of criticism. Roy Keane, on the other hand, just didn't care. He knew most people didn't like him. All he wanted to do was win and took aggressive risks to do just that, which ultimately led him to being suspended and missing the biggest match of his life, the 1999 Champions League final. So these are just a couple of characteristics Sam Walker presents in his book on what makes a great captain. But why is it that captains are getting worse today? Why don't we see as many Roy Keynes or Puyols anymore? Well, I think there's a couple of reasons. One is that professional sports teams are now pampered beyond belief. Everything, and I mean everything, is taken care for them. They have player liaison officers and other individuals who sort any issue whatsoever for them. Things like finding accommodation, opening bank accounts, sorting household bills. The point of this is to allow players to 100% focus on their game, which you just feel creates a lot of overgrown children. Not taking and engaging in basic adult responsibilities leaves you feeling that a lot of sports stars are just softer than previous generations. Having private chefs cook for you every day or traveling on state-of-the-art team coaches with heated seats even when you're in the youth or reserve squad, it makes professional athletes believe they're it. They get signed up by super agents who will do everything in their power to make sure their clients test the boundaries of a salary they can just about get away with. So there's now less struggle and a need to remain grounded. It creates a lot of individualism and a me mentality. And because of that, people are not looking to take responsibility for others. And so due to this, the pool of exceptional captains is getting shallower and shallower. So you're less likely to find someone like Tim Duncan today, someone who Sam Walker sees as best embodying another key captain characteristic, that of a willingness to do thankless tasks in the shadows. Such captains shun attention, they don't like the limelight or people fussing over them and doing everything for them. Instead, they want a functional role. They will happily tidy up the dressing room and do their best to let the rest of the team shine, even if it's at the expense of themselves. And Duncan Best showed this in taking a major wage cut of $10 million in 2015, in order to allow the San Antonio Spurs have a larger salary cap and sign LaMarcus Aldridge. Few athletes today would pass up the opportunity of one last big payday, and it's not necessarily their fault, it's how the culture of professional sports has developed to create a me, me, me mentality. And another reason great captains are dying out is because of technology. In football, VAR means someone like Roy Keane, if he played today the way that he did, would probably get sent off every other game. You just can't get away with as much aggression in sports today, with officials having the opportunity to watch events back that would previously go unnoticed. 
And the other key technology is growth of the internet and social media, particularly the age of outrage, where players are always at risk of trending for the wrong reasons. They need to present a clean image and not cause controversy, which perhaps explains why we see less of another characteristic Walker presents, having strong convictions and the courage to stand apart. Top captains use and create conflict wisely. They're not afraid to ruffle feathers in the dressing room or say things that offend or harm the egos of others. But because everything is recorded today and easily open to being twisted, athletes just bite their tongues a lot more. They're media trained in the same way politicians are, so there's no slip ups or things that can be used against them. And this prevents an authentic communication style from emerging that the very best captains used to show. So what does the future of sports captains look like? Well, shifts in professional sport may continue to erode some of these characteristics that Sam Walker identifies in the captain class. So if you're a captain, I seriously recommend reading his book so that you can best embody these traits and we don't see great captains die out completely. See you in the next one.